Hello, this is Dr. Alexander Haskell again, and this time I'll be speaking about TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone produced by the pituitary in the brain. Uh, again, TSH is a hormone that uh, primarily stimulates the thyroid to make more hormones. And uh, most phys physicians don't uh, uh, really consider too much uh, what is an optimal level of TSH, especially when dealing with Hashimoto's, because ideally it is to get that hormone far enough down that it stops uh, stimulating the thyroid cells to make hydrogen peroxide. But there is an optimal level of TSH because TSH not only stimulates thyroid cells, but it also again helps to upregulate and increase the number of these sodium iodide symports in various tissues, breast, ovaries, and prostate, and others, many others. And that's a really important uh, uh, function, a really important way of preventing problems in the future and optimizing health and longevity for people. So. Let's talk about TSH for a moment. Um, yes, let us get TSH down to probably below one, uh, if we can, through uh, thyroid medication and also through avoiding iodine. But then, at some point, when the antibodies are down and TSH is down below one, we really want to increase TSH as long as it does not increase inflammation. And the way, of course, that we're doing that is by having plenty of antioxidants such as glutathione around or in the system and also in the thyroid, which would help to prevent inflammation from occurring again from uh, the TSH. So what we're looking for, and let's call it the second stage of treatment, when we have been able to introduce iodine, we need to monitor TSH to bring it up to an optimal level, which is around between 1.6 or 7 to 2.2. And that's our goal. We have several goals in the treatment and recovery from the condition, notice I didn't say disease, but from the condition of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And one of those goals is to get TSH to come back into that zone, that optimal zone. And again, the way we do that partly is by the use of small amounts of iodine and potassium iodide, monitoring through blood tests, TSH levels. And once we find that optimal point, then we know that the iodine and potassium iodide that we're giving to people um, is getting into the tissues and preserving the health of those tissues. And I'll explain one more thing, and that is women who are on Synthroid or levothyroxine, which as you know is solely T4, um, are probably on that medication because their thyroid glands uh, gland was not able to produce enough thyroid hormones. And the most the primary reason for that, besides Hashimoto's, is iodine deficiency. And you also know that the possible primary etiology or cause of Hashimoto's is also the same, which is a lack of iodine. So women that are put on thyroid medication have not addressed the original cause of their problem, which most of the time is a lack of iodine. Therefore, they are they are still left with an iodine deficiency. And as you may know already, that women with hypothyroidism, with an enlarged thyroid called a goiter, which most of the time is due to an iodine deficiency as well as too much estrogen in the body, and women with Hashimoto's have an increased, a greatly increased risk of developing not only fibrocystic breast disease, but also breast cancer. Fibrocystic breast disease being a, another a known risk factor for eventually developing breast cancer. So all those conditions, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's, and thyroid goiter, almost always have, uh, to some extent, a deficiency of iodine. So we need to, as a second stage of treating Hashimoto's, we need to get iodine into the system as long as we don't elevate the TSH too high, and as long as we don't start that cascade of high TSH, increased hydrogen peroxide, increased inflammation.
And by now, I think you understand the various roles that, or, or different nutrients that we use to help prevent that from that cycle from happening again. So, uh, once again, the TSH is a very, very important hormone produced by the pituitary, and most of the time, most physicians don't understand the importance of keeping TSH at an optimal level. Thank you.